Well, there's a mirage of things. So I, I think, first of all, we have to go back to the writer you are very well known for teaching skills. Your students uh, speak a whole lot about you, Miss Nigeria Communication. Yeah, I said, you know, let's pick them up. Uh, let's take them back to Nigeria and let's teach them a different kind of job. Okay, the program is The Woman, reaching you from the largest television network, the NTA, a program that showcases the spices of personalities, the spices of women, women who are making waves, women who are contributing more than just their small quota to the national development, women who are actually setting pace for a lot of younger people, male and female alike, to toe the line. My name is Elizabeth and I have a delighting guest in the house. Who is she? Well, if you recall, at the time, in 1987, I think, someone made Nigeria real proud. Prior to then, she was doing it. After that, she still kept on doing it. Right now, what is she up to? Who is my guest, really? Let's take the strip and get to find out. When we come back, we did a talk. Mary Nyali is seated here with me in the studio. You're also a traditional title holder. So I go and uh, <laughs> maybe say, how do I say, Dobale, Chief Mary Nyali. Welcome to The Woman. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, it's always a delight whenever I have the opportunity of speaking with you because for a long time you inspired me and it's amazing. A lot of people will drop off halfway. You never did. You still inspire me. I feel delighted. I must say thank you for that. Thank you. Now, in 1987, when you touched that little thing, the gold, how did it make you feel? Um, you're taking me back memory lane now. <laughs> Actually, it's 96 Atlanta, okay. and uh, it was a bronze medal. Mm -hmm. Chioma Ajuma was one that got the gold medal mm -hmm. before I did. Mm -hmm. um, it was a life-changing history. I've been yearning for an individual medal of mine, because I already got a bronze in a relay in 92 Atlanta, I mean uh, Barcelona, and getting the bronze in the 200 meters in an individual race was... If I felt like I've had it all because I've competed at the highest level of uh, athletics competition and I have done it all. Taking you back to the days when you were um, secondary school girl, college girl, <laughs> a lot of people actually start from that time. Yes. And I recall your parents at a point to tell you, don't go to school, but you don't go to sports, but you smuggled a bit of things. You want to share that story with us? What propelled you into sports really? Um, yes, you're right. My mother, I had a one parent. I lost my dad when I was three years old. So my mother became everything to me and the rest of the family. She was just like every other mother. Want their child to get educated, get a job, get married, and start making babies. And just fit into the normal society. But unfortunately for her, or fortunately for her, <laughs> as the case may be, um, Mary, this Mary Onyale, uh, was not one of the child that is, the should be, job. yeah, I, I can be canned, I can be crafted, I have a different mold. I, I just couldn't fit into that norm that the society want everybody to fit into. My mom would not allow me to go out for uh, competitions, will not allow me to partake in the school games. I was frustrated. I was doing well in school, but she still wanted me to just focus on sports. I got to a point where our school van has to come all the way to the house to pick me up, to beg for mom's permission to pick me up. And I sometimes smuggle my PE uniform into <laughs> in the bottom part of my school bag covered with books. I did everything I could because my love and passion for the sport was just too strong. But eventually, uh, with the help of my uh, then coach that discovered me, Toblo, he, she, she, she started to soften up and yeah, she's enjoying it, like I said. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And it tremendously so. A lot of people, yeah. Nigerians, are enjoying it. But sometimes I am not really much of a sports person. Mm -hmm. Never done anything competitive sports wise, really. Okay. And I don't have such plans for now. But I'm wondering <laughs> is it that easy to really be a track and field person? You know, what are the challenges you mm -hmm. get to meet? It's not easy at all. Not easy. But it's, what, it's, it's worth the while. 
why it's gonna you you're gonna find it enjoyable and easy is uh, uh, eventually is because you have to have the passion. If you don't have the passion for anything you do in life, whether sports or be a doctor, if you don't have the passion to save life as a doctor, it won't it won't make any sense to you. So my love for the sport was overwhelming. I I had to do whatever it takes to have fun. And I find it very uh, fun, especially traveling around the world, seeing, uh, meeting different people, getting a chance for a scholarship uh, through sport, mm -hmm. educational scholarship through sport, which obviously a single parent like my mom obviously cannot afford. And uh, it just opened up a whole lot of doors because through there I was able to channel my, my siblings through mm -hmm. sport to a uh, scholarship in the U.S. So what else can a, a, a mother of a single mother ask for? It saved her a whole, a whole lot. You know, you're talking, I'm thinking about it. I wish I was um, some years backward. I'd have tried to make it <laughs> and see if I can get a whole lot. So just like you and me, right? Yeah. All right, now I'm still hitting on the challenges. In the course of doing this, you mentioned the benefits. What are the things, you know, were there moments you thought about and said, wow, why hmm. did I do this? Yes. Missing your family, hmm. having have to, first I left here, I left the shores of Nigeria at age 17 to the United States. I miss my parents, I mean I miss my family, I miss Nigerian food, I miss the weather, and getting there, no mother, no father, no uncle, I was all alone. Hmm. I had to adjust. It took a while, but I, I eventually adjusted. It, the challenges are there, but they're not as much as the, the positives I got out of it. I got a free education, for God's sake. I, I made my mother proud. I have my certificate. I eventually went professional, and I made a lot of money out of it, and took care of her in return, and the rest of my family. Mm -hmm. The challenges to me are not that much. It's just that early stage where your parents, obviously Niger and African parents, don't understand the benefit of sports. But I think now they're beginning to have a, a, a change of mind about sports. Cool, that's cool. Now, um, I'm sure a lot of uh, young people who are with us now are probably uh, thinking about how to get in. And beyond just the passion, what do I need as a prerequisite to be um, like you? You? No, not me. Uh. <laughs> You already said you don't want to go through <laughs> that me. because it's too rigorous for you. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, for an athlete out there yearning to be the next Mary Ali, it's, it's a very uh, easy road to travel if you did the right thing at the right time. Uh, the project I'm doing right now is to make sure that these are the young athletes coming after me get it right. If they don't get it right at the early stage, it becomes a problem at the older Later. age. Yes, because you can't teach an old dog a new trick. So we're going into primary and secondary school uh, divisions to raise kids and teach them the mentality, the psyche, and what it takes to go into the sports and be able to sustain and last as long as possible, maybe even longer than I did. Uh, the male, the, our male uh, counterparts can do it because they're obviously men, and uh, they don't have to stop and make get babies. married and make babies. So they are, they, are, they are at more advantages than we are. But all around, you just need to find that sport that you love. Hold on to it. Look for a perfect mentorship, mm -hmm. a perfect mentor that can help you, show you what it takes to get to the to the stadium, which is in, in every sport is the Olympic Games. Okay. And just listen to what he or she has to say and you, you have it made. You know, you were mentioning about your program and I was actually going to ask you what you're doing at the moment by way of mentorship for younger people because the truth is there are a lot of youth who want to, you know, get into this business mm -hmm. and get sustained yeah. just like you did. What's this program you're talking about? The program is called Boost. 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 Boost, okay. Basic Olive Opportunity Sports Training. Oh. It says what it is. Basic means from grassroots. Oh. We, 11 of us, 
ex-internationals that competed for Nigeria in several sports. All female? Male, male and female. Okay. We came together 11 years ago hmm. to form this uh, project because we saw that over the years, especially when our, the likes of us retired, we didn't see that gap closing. Instead, it was widening in the sense that our medal hall in international competitions started to dwindle. So we all felt the pain and came back from wherever, whatever country we are, uh, uh, we are based on at and decided to put this project together. So we put it together and we know that before you do anything sports anywhere in the world, not just Nigeria, you have to have money. It's capital intensive. Hmm. Because when I was competing, I knew how much I spent on myself on a professional level. So what costs money? You know, in, I thought it was just eating and running. You can eat okay. and yeah, you eat and run, but you have to do some more, some other things <laughs> like, too. Um, you have a support system around you as a pro. I'm talking about going pro right now. Okay. So to go pro, you have at least five pillars of support system. You have your coach, you have your manager who serves for competition for you, you have your doctor, you have your uh, physiotherapist slash massage therapist, and then you have your psychologist. Oh, make it six, your financial manager. Yes, because the monies you made, if you don't uh, use them properly, you end up broke and destitute at the end of your career. All this are what we, the ex-internationals that form Boost, are bringing to bear with our areas of uh, uh, specialties and expertise, especially for all of us on the program, we all graduates. We all graduated from one department or the other. We have finances, we have uh, uh, psychologists, we have everything in the team. So we are bringing our experiences to bear from our academics and then uh, uh, bringing it into bear in the sports that we, we all participated in to teach these kids not to go the route that we did before we found our way. So let them get it right from onset. So boost is basically to go to the grassroots, find those talents, and raise them to stardom. The the grassroots is what it, age? Grassroots, we're talking from six. Oh, six years. Oh, yes. Cool. Six, because that's how, how old I was when I started, the hmm. majority of us on the program. You're back to Nigeria, and um, I know it's not full time. How do you, you know, combine shuttling two continents and trying to get this job done? It's not been easy. That's the part that is not easy. Playing the sport was easy for me because it came natural. But uh, after retirement and trying to shuttle the two continents, it's not been easy because it costs uh, effectiveness. It's, it's, it's very expensive ticket-wise. Uh, having to move and uh, change uh, continents and climates, sometimes, you know, you, you, took, you take ill and having to move my son because I have a 10 year old that I have to shuttle back and forth. It's, it's, it's kind of difficult, but it's worth it. It's worth it in the sense that I know that the athletes here are yearning for, for, for us to get this program going. Yeah. For the past 11 years, like I said, we've been trying to get it going, but the past two and a half years, we've actually made a very, very remarkable uh, move. The first center we finally got together is in Ondo, it's coming up in Ondo states. We and the Ondo state government and the Athletic Federation of Nigeria, we've signed an MOU that we're going to uh, use in implementing the National Athletic Center in Ondo. But our community center, the one for primary and secondary school kids, mm. is in Ofa, Kwara State. That was made possible through uh, our national chairman, uh, Are Afe Babalola. He was the one that gave us the first 10 million seed fund to activate offer the community project and that's going well as well so we're hitting it on all f uh, all levels the grassroots and the elite okay beautiful beautiful now um I, <laughs> I, I i really you've been talking and i've been admiring you and i'm like is this woman really 50. how do you still manage to keep training you keep training yes okay i have to practice at least three times a week. Oh. Yes, I have to do something. I, I'm not practicing in the sense of uh, doing this as intensively as I used to do during my heydays. I have to do something at least 45 minutes to an hour every other day. 
or as the chance may be because I travel so much. But um, I would owe this to naturally the genes that runs in my family because uh, my mom is the same, my sister, and we're all sports inclined. Some time ago, you were offered a job. I mean, you would have been making a lot of money outside <laughs> of Nigeria, but you turned it down to work for your country. So uh, what was going on in the back of your mind? Well, I was offered a job in a foreign land. I've always told myself when I was leaving for the US on the scholarship that this scholarship is a means to an end. I got educated, got my degree. I've always told myself I need to come back home. And the vehicle to come back home presented itself through Boost and through my own personal project, Yali Yali Sportswear Line. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't even hesitate when that opportunity came. And um, um, yeah, it's, it's, it would have been comfortable for me living in the US where everything is, according to people that don't know, rosy, you know, but um, I chose to come home. I, I have a calling, I have a calling. My calling is to go back and give back to the society that made me. I, I shuttle back and forth, I didn't miss anything. So I'm living the best of the two worlds. Oh, beautiful, Basically. beautiful. Talk to me about Yali Yali, you mentioned it. I, oh. What kind of costume is that? Yali Yali, it's uh, a sportswear brand okay. that uh, myself and my partners put together uh, in 2006, right after my retirement. Uh, I just thought, what is it that I should, that I could do that I love to do. I would like to get up in the morning and don't feel like I have to question why I have to get up. And uh, if it's sports related and it's towards fashion, which I love, I love both, it kind of made sense to have a sports fashion uh, enterprise, uh, entrepreneurship uh, program uh, project. And it worked out very well because I see that the athletes that are, we're going to have on the boots program are going to wear something. And if we, if we have to go buy the, the regular brand names in the, in the shop, it's, it's extremely it's too expensive. expensive. Yes. So I decided to, to, make a, to create a sportswear line where these athletes on our program are going to be well kitted, look good, feel good, and easily affordable, not just for our athletes, but also for, for everyday gender, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to try to wear one and um, see what it looks like and then yeah. maybe get to compete with you. Uh -huh. I'll get you the story later. <laughs> but for now, I'm wondering, are you coaching your son to be like you or is he also running his gen genes? Well, my daughter is 20. She also has an sp uh, academic sports scholarship in the U.S. Um, my son is 10. He's running around the house trying to uh, make himself look like Usain Bolt. I don't know which way he's going, but I've always told myself not to make my kids or force my kids to partake in any particular sport, even though I'm an athletics lover. I let them choose whatever sport they want to uh, get involved in. My daughter chose athletics at the end of the day after playing a lot of ball games. She ended up in a uh, uh, 100, 200 meters, just like me. <laughs> my son, I don't know what, he's, what he Can wants do. to do yet, <laughs> but I can't coach. Not that I can't coach. I chose not to coach because yeah. um, I'll be too hard on them, especially my own kids. I was hard on myself as an athlete because I was too disciplined to a fault that I may push my athletes too hard and break them down. So I let those that have the patience and the know-how to do it, I'll do the mentorship part and provide them with what they're going to wear and just make their welfare comfortable. Looking very interesting. Just like um, women say, never allow your husband to teach you how to drive. Exactly. <laughs> that happened to me too. Someone else had to eventually come in and taught me how to drive because it didn't work. <laughs> Hey, that sure, sure doesn't work. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Thank I've had you. fun really speaking with you. But before we leave, I'd like to ask, um, what do you see as hope for the Nigerian female athletes tomorrow? A lot of positive future for them. Why? Because I'm here. I'm here. They see me as the hope 
for Nigerian women, not just in sport. They see me as uh, someone that has been there, done that. What aspect of life does a Nigerian woman want to go through or have, have not gone through or need to go through that I have not experienced? I becoming a mentor to these kids, uh, to, to Nigerian women, is natural. It comes natural because I, I didn't have anybody, I didn't have that many people to mentor me when I was uh, growing up. So I, I felt that coming home, there's also a need to focus on our female folks. Because to be honest, 75%, oh sorry, 80% of medals won over the years from the time we started uh, competing in the world stage, Nigeria I'm talking about, has always been won by Nigerians. I mean by uh, females. Mm -hmm. Our female athletes have given Nigeria 80% of our medals. Okay. And I don't want that to stop. I want to continue on that trend until time in memorial. All right, she has such a zeal, and some time ago she actually tried to, you know, lure me into becoming <laughs> an athlete herself. I bluntly refused, but I'll play you back what transpired at the stadium. Stay. Just before we go, I know mm. beyond um, just training those kids, mm. there was something you were talking about earlier with your manager, the uh, Let's Go Dare Girls or something. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about it briefly. Oh, the Let's Go Girls? Mm -hmm. Okay, the Let's Go Girl project is um, a project that we created from our Sports Development Fund, NSDFI, and Boost. It's actually a platform where all girls from zero, when I say girls, I mean different, <laughs> all categories of girls from zero age to, to 100. 80. Yes. Uh huh. Any woman is more than welcome to participate in the program. But right now, because we are uh, more into the active part of the girls, mm -hmm. we're looking for kids between the age of six to 18 to partake in sports. If you're that good, let's go girls offers you a scholarship all right thank you so much for coming on the show and i'd like to end on your notes like you said let's go girls it's time for us to step out and take the giant stride as women continue to conquer the society because i always say a house without a woman is simply a house never a home so we are there to make it happen my name is elizabeth do join me again next week for another exciting personality talk on the program the woman Well, there's a mirage of things. So I, I think, first of all, we have.